Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is so good to be with you. Uh, I have I, I've been watching what God is doing here on Facebook. Facebook I follow Joshua. Joshua in Facebook uh, and, and I see the posts from time to time about what God is doing here. And I believe God sent me a very long way to deposit something tonight. So, so I want you to be ready tonight. Your life's going to change tonight. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence. I thank you for these wonderful people that love you so much that they would be in church at midnight. And Father, we thank you that you've heard our praise. Your presence is here. And we ask that you would speak. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. You know, I heard the Spirit of God speak to me as we were worshiping earlier today. And the things he said, he said there's a David anointing in this place. There's a David anointing here. And, and, and I want to stir that up today. Now, what, what does that mean, a David anointing? I want to lay a foundation and then we're going to jump into this. First Samuel chapter 16. Verse 6 through 11. It's the story of David. Basically what has happened in Israel. Is King Saul has not been following and obeying God. He has become a, a, a man pleaser. He is no longer listening to the voice and doing what the voice of God is saying. So because of that, God tells the prophet Samuel, it's time to anoint another king. A new order. We're no longer going to follow the order of Saul. I'm going to raise up a new king who's going to produce a new order. And so he tells the prophet, go to the house of Jesse and tell Jesse to bring his sons. And when he brings his sons, I will tell you who the new king will be. And so he goes to the house of Jesse. And he, says, and he says, bring your sons. And he brings his sons. Except for David. He has seven sons lined up. And the prophet stands in front of each son. The first son, the Bible says, was very good to look upon. And uh, the prophet said, surely this is him, God. He has it all together. He looks like a king. He sounds like a king. But the Spirit of God said, that's not him. And he went to the next son. And I don't know, the next son may have been uh, very educated. Trained in the best schools. He says, this must be him. 
The prophet says, the Spirit of God says, no, that's not him either. And pretty soon he goes through all the sons. And God says, it's none of these. So the prophet says to Jesse, don't you have any more children? And I'm sure Jesse, with a look of disgust, he says, well, there's David. Oh, that way she eh. And and he goes, but you know, I don't think he's king material. Mm, and so the prophet says, bring him here. And he says, well, he's he's out watching the sheep. I don't care, bring him here. And so they go to get David. And how we go through to a koja. The Bible said he was ready looking. He probably smelled like sheep. He probably, you know, came in all sweaty and dirty. And the Spirit of God said something. He said, this is him. Now what does that have to do with us in this room? Because I believe this, this group here, God has anointed you to, to bring revival to the nations. Now I need you to catch this today. I need you to catch this. See, see there are other groups maybe even in this nation that might have more money than you. Might have more influence than you. Maybe have more education than you. And although all that is good, that is not what God looks at. He looks at the heart. Can I tell you something? Do not be ashamed of who you are. Be proud of your country of origin. Be proud of being an immigrant. Be proud of the situation that God has put you in. Do not believe the enemy. He, he will try to make you feel small. He will try to intimidate you and make you feel less than because this is not your country that you live in. He'll try to make you feel less than because of the jobs you do. Many of us here maybe work in the service industry. You're still mighty in God. Because do you know who else worked in the service industry? King David. King David. You're just like King David. Now, King David was out doing a job that a father was not supposed to give his son to do. Watching the sheep was not a job for a son. It was a job for a slave or a servant. That is why when, when there was this party for, to anoint the new king, David didn't get an invitation because his father didn't even view him as a son. 
His own father only viewed him as a servant. And so every day, he did a servant's job. While his brothers served in the house, he served in the field. But you know, while he was serving in the field, he gave his life to serve, to serve those sheep. And God saw that. I don't know what job you have right now. I don't know what you're doing in this city. But that job does not define you. David did not let being a shepherd define him. And he did his job to the best of his ability. And that job prepared him to reign. Being a good servant prepared him for the anointing that God had for him. The jobs you have right now, the things you're doing are preparing you for what God's going to do for many of you. Because just like God was watching David, God is watching you. And he could take you from being a dishwasher he could take you from being a waiter and make you a king in the kingdom of God. And I sense there's an anointing for that in this house. See, God loves to raise up unlikely champions. He loves to take the unqualified and make them qualified. He loves to take the people that others look down on and he loves to elevate them. Some of you here, maybe you've been marginalized. Or maybe you've been mistreated. Do not fret. God is going to heal your broken heart. God is going to elevate you. How many believe that tonight? So David was this young man that nobody thought could do great things. But God saw greatness in him. And in one day, God anointed him king. He went from being a shepherd to becoming, to becoming king of Israel. But there was a process. Now let me talk to you a little bit about the process. As I was sitting with your pastors today, God began to show me things about this house. It's not going to be long you're going to fill this place. It's not going to be long. God is raising an army here. Here's the most exciting thing about it. You all are the answer to, to people's prayers. There are people out there praying for help. They're hurting. 
They're, they're lonely. They're lost. And God is going to send you to go get them. But there's a process. Because of what David went through, he was a very hurt individual. Put yourself in David's shoes. Think about having a father that would treat you that bad. Where he would have a party. Invite all the sons. But not invite you. Think of that rejection. Some of you don't have to think too hard. Because you felt rejection like that. That's okay. Because God's going to heal you. See, David lived rejected. And when you study the life of David, even as he became king, he always longed for something. To be loved by a father. To be accepted. Because just like us in this room, he had, he had some problems. His family rejected him. Uh, some Bible theologians believe that he was born out of wedlock. Maybe even a child of an affair that Jesse had. Which is why they didn't consider him part of the inheritance. He was treated like a slave, not a son. Maybe some of you have felt that in your life. But it didn't stop when he was a child. The Bible says after he killed Goliath, he went to work for King Saul. And he loved his king. He served his king with all his heart. But King Saul got jealous of him and tried to kill him. Yet another rejection. See, David didn't have it easy. Some of you in this room haven't had it easy. Maybe you've been rejected by family. Maybe you've had your heart broken by a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Maybe you've been through a divorce. Maybe you've been ostracized because you're a, 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 a foreigner. See, David had these same experiences. But something happened to David. That I'm believing is going to happen to us tonight. Is he encountered God in a new way? He encountered God like it talks about in the book of Genesis. He encountered the great El Shaddai. The All Sufficient One. The One Who Meets All Needs. Because later on we see in Psalms 23, he writes a very famous song. And he makes this statement. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You see, David reached a place where he no longer had to long for his father's love. 
he got it from his heavenly father. He no longer had to long for his family's acceptance. He got that from his heavenly father. He no longer had to feel less than. He no longer had to feel like a slave. Because God the Father had, had made him a son. And that's the process. This church is going to do amazing things. Not just here, but around the world. Even back in your home country. They're going to feel the shock waves of what's happening here. About a month and a half ago, in my own city of Sacramento, I had a pastor contact me. And he is from Myanmar. And he said to me, I've started a church in Sacramento. And it's all refugees from Myanmar. And I want you to come and preach to them. So I went and we had a powerful service. And I told them, I'm going to be in KL pretty soon. And I'm going to be coming to this church. And they right away knew your pastors. <laughs> All the way in Sacramento, California. Oh, California, Sacramento. <laughs> They're being impacted by you. <laughs> They're watching what is happening here. <laughs> it's beginning. <laughs> it's only the beginning. <laughs> There's a David anointing here. It's a kingly anointing. And, and, and some of you right now, please don't, don't get your identity from what you do. You might have to get up tomorrow and go to work in a hotel. You may get up tomorrow and wash dishes. But do it with all your heart. Because you're a David. You're a David. Tell your neighbor you're a David. And just like David, God is creating a new order. A new order of, uh, I'm trying to think the word that, as it translates right. Um, God is raising up a new remnant. That's what it is. That will, that will do what others won't do. Listen, there's something very specific that I need to do today. I want you to just sit down and close your eyes for a moment. The Spirit of God is here today because He loves you. And in order for that David anointing to come on your life, the Holy Spirit wants to do for you what He did for David. He wants to make it so that you do not long anymore to be accepted by man but only to be accepted by God and God accepts you but there are some of you here you've been hurt and you walk with a limp in the spirit. When you're alone, you get depressed. 
Maybe you were abused as a child. Some of you were neglected by your parents. So was David. Some of you may have experienced a hurt in a relationship. God doesn't want you to walk anymore with that pain. He wants to make it so that you are whole. And if you're here today, and you would say, Pastor, I need to be whole. I want you to listen very carefully to me. Before I pray for you, I want to ask today. Maybe you're here for the very first time. Maybe somebody brought you to this place. They brought you here because they care about you. They brought you here because they want you to meet Jesus. Because Jesus is not mad at you. He loves you. God the Father has been looking for you. And he sent somebody to bring you here tonight. If you're here today with nobody looking around right now, just be honest with yourself. And you've never given your life to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is calling you today. Come home. Jesus wants to come in your life. He wants to take away every mistake you've ever made. And He wants to make you home. So if you're here, this is your time. I would be honored to pray with you. If you would like to receive Jesus into your life, just slip up a hand right where you're at. Amen. I see those hands over there. In the back, in the back. Hand, hands going up all over this place. I want you to do one more bold thing. I want you to stand to your feet. And I want you to meet me down here. I would love to pray with you. Let's give them a good hand as they come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please don't be shy. Please don't be shy. Give them a good hand as they come right now. Hallelujah. We'll wait, we'll wait, it's okay. I want you to do something here. Sometimes people can get embarrassed or nervous. We don't want to embarrass you. But we really want you to meet Jesus. But I want to tell you something. I want you to ask your neighbor. Ask him if they need to come up here. And if they do, say, I'll go up there with you. Amen. Just, just go ahead and ask. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, give them a good hand as they come. Come on. Yes, praise God. Hallelujah. We had to wait for you. The Lord would not let me pray. Yes, give it up. Give God some glory. Give I was waiting for you. I was waiting for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to look up here. You guys that are standing up here right now in the front. 
do I look up here? Let me see your eyeballs. Then we meet alone. We just don't mean to marry. Just no idea. The Bible says this. Jesus got to be your body. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, Jesus is Lord. He's going to take away all your sins, all your mistakes, all the pain that I was talking about. He's going to wipe it away. And then, and then he's going to come and live in your life. You are no longer lost. God has found you. And now you're sons and daughters of God. So I want you to pray this prayer after your pastor. And mean it with your heart. Right, go ahead. ตีนลงทาก็นี่ပြီးတော့ပြောပါ คนลุเปโดจาเจซูเตมาเลยยินีมาสะยวยจนุดีพยาธิคีนีเลคันจิโกคันยาบีปิ๊ซงโดดูพย่องมัดโดดูพิเศษบีโทอดจิซูเตม
Father, we ask right now as I lay my hands on them, the same way you administer healing through the laying on of hands, the way you heal physical bodies, I pray that you're just going to heal them as well in their emotions and in their minds. Father, I just thank you for this man. I hear the Spirit of God say, It wasn't your fault. It wasn't your fault. And today we just command shame to go. Go from him. In Jesus' name. We command all the residue of that experience to no longer harm you. Father, we just pray for healing. No more dreams, no more bad dreams. Oh, we command the memories of those things. Father, we just thank you for restoration. 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 Praise God. Jesse, if you would come. Oh, Jesus. Can we get the praise team to just begin to worship? Father, we just thank you. Father, I thank you for these, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask for healing right now. We're going to release this David thing.
May they birth churches. May they birth ministries. May they go to nations. May they go to the nations. Oh, I hear the nations calling out for you. Now I want you to lift your hands, everybody up here. And I want you to just pray in the Holy Ghost. Father, right now, release it, Lord God. Release it. Release it. Release it. Release it. Release it, Lord God. So so brava. So brava. So brava. So brava. So brava. မိစ်ဝေးကူကြည့်ရှုနေတာဒီယူအမ်စီအသင်းတော်ရဲ့တရားခေါ်ချက်များပဲဖြစ်ပါတယ်မိစ်ဝေးအာမလေးရှားနိ